let's talk about nutritional deficiencies. I just want to draw your attention to this question here, you can see it on screen, which is talking about which of the following categories of clientele is the most likely to experience nutritional deficiency. Now this one comes up in your level three nutrition exam and this particular question is taken from our 50 mock questions. That one's available on the download link um, underneath this video so if you want to grab the other mock questions then by all means take them. Now what I want to kind of highlight is that you can see these different options on here. You can actually see uh, the, the A, B, C and D, the different multiple choice answers that are given. Now these are really focusing on the activity of that person, the fact that they're all women, so that's the same. Then it's talking about pregnancy, which obviously is a condition that is going to require a little bit more demand on the body for nutrients. Then you've got the age as well as being talk, talked about. So we're going to sort of look at what that actually means now and how you can go about answering this properly. Now, some people get caught up on the fact that it's about activity, but remember we're talking about nutritional here. So this is also including micronutrients. This is what we're really talking about. Now we need a little demand between intake. It's about a balance really between the intake that that person has and the demand that they are going through. Now, Certain populations, in fact, these three populations here, pregnancy, elderly, and children, they may suffer in their intake, but generally, even if their intake is about right, they also have a higher demand, which means that they're for nutrients, micronutrients in their body, which means that they are more likely to suffer a nutritional deficiency than somebody that doesn't fall under these categories and is classed as an average normal client. So... Uh, intake, for example, they might be doing fine as a pregnancy, they might have increased it, but there might be a problem somewhere in this gap here that's stopping that absorption, which means it doesn't quite meet the demand. So sometimes it's not just about what they're taking in or what they're doing, but actually about the absorption of that food as well. And things like, especially with the elderly, it can affect in terms of, uh, if you think about minerals being absorbed and sort of bone density. If you think about being postmenopausal as a female, that's going to affect absorption based on the hormones. And that can mean that they just don't meet the demand and therefore they are more likely to have nutritional deficiency than an average client. Now, one thing I really want to highlight is it does not relate to activity. So activity does not fall into this category no so the answer does not involve how active the client is and that's because it's about a nutritional intake it's talking about this nutritional intake side of it rather than the fact that somebody might be really active and also it would take an extreme amount of activity to mean that the demand was so high that they became nutritionally depleted as a result of their demand. They'd have to take in hardly anything. And protein deficiencies are null and void. They're basically unheard of in the um, modern world, so in the developed countries, because we actually are very good at intaking the right nutrients on a global kind of general basis. Certainly not enough discrepancy to class as a deficiency. The places you're going to see that is going to be in children, elderly and pregnancy. So they're the three that you need to remember. And a previous learner actually used this little acronym of PEC to remember those as well. But the way I like to remember it is nutritional deficiency is talking about a specific condition or a specific special population. They have a specific need above and beyond a normal client. So when you think of deficiency, think outside of the normal average client and you'll be left with your pregnancy, elderly and children and hopefully they'll appear in the answers. So here's those answers again. So based on this, which one would you go for? So um, for example, it says inactive middle-aged woman, active young woman, pregnant woman or premenopausal women. So have a little think. And you should have chosen C, which is a pregnant woman. And like I said, that's because they fall under this category whereby they actually are requiring more um, more nutrients in order to feed their baby for that one in particular. If you have any questions on this, then please do pop a little comment below. That would be really good. And actually, this came from a series of questions where I sent out an email, asked what 
what people have what questions are people getting stuck on and this question came up and they picked it out of our 50 mock questions so really i just want to kind of throw that out there this one is for sally so thank you sally for popping that one in um but generally if you've got any questions at all pop a little comment below and then i will get to working on those and sending out some videos also, make sure that you download those 50 mock questions. So if you're working towards your nutrition exam and you're looking for little tips like this, download those mock questions because they'll be able to help you and you'll be able to find that in the description with this video. So I hope you have a lovely day. Good luck for your nutrition exam. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.